Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool. I was gonna see if you guys could guess and see what tonight's video was about, or today, depending on when you're watching. Can anybody guess? So it's fall, right? So we have apples and pumpkins and gourds, acorns, pine cones, sunflowers. But so tonight, or today, Again, depending on when you're watching, we are, I'm going to share with you about, I think it's 10, 10 fall art ideas. They're all open-ended art, not directed drawings, none of that. Um, this is all going to be fun, open-ended art where you, they, students can just explore and get messy and investigate all the fall things. So these things would be great for a apple theme, a pumpkin theme, Halloween, um, if you're doing like camping and acorns, if you're just doing fall in general, scarecrows, all of that, all those themes, you can use all these things for. And again, I have 10 ideas for you with twists on them because, you know, I like to keep things exciting and fun. So I want you to tell me in the comments, what is your favorite fall art activity? And I know probably many of you guys are going to say that apple printing, right? Or the pumpkin printing. You cut the apple in half and you do the prints. Or maybe you get little mini pumpkins. Obviously, this mine's fake, but you get the real mini pumpkins, cut them in half, and then they can do the prints that way. That's really fun, but everybody does that one, right? And we do it all the time. So let me share some other fun ones you can do. So one thing I love to do in the fall is still life. So still life is when you put something, okay, all of my stuff is fake. So still life doesn't, I feel like, always have to be real. I've, obviously, real is ideal, but you could set up a fall... Thing. So you could do apples, you could put out some pumpkins and gourds. Obviously, if they're real, they're, it's a better, but just grab it from your science center, put it over here. And then what I usually do is I put out the fall colored paint, whoops, which I have here. I'll just show you, it's all on my tray. So let's say, so you could do, you could do apples one week, you could do fall, fall um, pumpkins one week, and then I literally, you can even have it on a tray like this if you wanted. You have all of your fall colored paint and you can make different variations. You can make like a darker red and you can make like um, like a darker fall colored um, orange. You can also add like fall spices to them. I also like to put out markers in the fall colors. Usually I have them in a cup. So we're gonna have the glue stick in it, but. You can put out some markers in the fall color. You can also put out the colored pencils in that fall color. And basically what students are gonna do is they're gonna draw or paint the pumpkins or the apples. And if you want, you could also do sunflowers. Now, I have um, those like blue gems in there for water. Mine are fake. Again, I don't, um, sunflowers you have to go buy at the store if you don't have them grab some fake ones from the dollar tree it works just the same the kids are going to be just as excited and they can draw sunflowers so what i like to do when we're doing still life whether we're doing pumpkins or flowers um if you're going over to support your little learners as they're painting you can say what shape do you notice this pumpkin is oh it's kind of an oval and it's got lines down it it has a brown stem at the top kind of like a a silly rectangle and this this gourd it's kind of like a big circle on one side and kind of like a smashed oval on the other with the stem coming out so you can really talk to them about simple shapes so that way they it'll help them be able to draw that, that whatever it is on their paper or you can say oh I see a green stem and you can even point to it it looks like a long line and at the top Look, the, the middle of the center, they're the center of the flower. It's brown and it has round petals coming out. Or maybe like this one has some pointy petals. So you can say, are you going to draw round or pointy petals for, um, for your flowers? Um, so again, it's, you can just be super, super fun. Here, um, here's one a kiddo did. You can also put out black Sharpies. They can draw with the Sharpie first, then they can paint it in up to you, totally up to you, but you could do sunflowers, you could put out pumpkins, you could do still life with apples, whatever you wanna do. And then I do love, um, here is a little board book. Um, it's by Julie Melberg, but it's um, all about um, in the garden with Van Gogh and it um, all of his, um, um, his still life sunflower paintings in it, which I love. So that's really fun if you wanna sneak in some art 
art history, art education in there. And I love it because it's a board book. And I love board books in the art center because if you put this out and they paint it, you can wipe it clean. It's great. Um, so yeah, so do some still life paintings in the fall for, um, for your fall theme. And again, sunflowers, pumpkins, um, apples. You could also put out a fall tray with like leaves and um, acorns, maybe whatever is in kind of outside by you. You could pull, put all of that on a tray or maybe you just have a whole bunch of acorns that they're drawing or painting, whatever they want to do. Um, so yeah, I'm going to move these. Okay. So we have still life, so you can do that. And then also I usually keep, if they're not out, I'll keep these fall colors at the easel. And then what I'll do next to my easel, which this is my easel, I will put out some fall pictures. And you guys, I'm really fancy. This is a calendar <laughs> that I got. Um, so put out some fall pictures and you can just clip it on. And that way it's just kind of there for inspiration. So if they want to draw something fall, they can. If you have the um, stem, I can build pack. All of those would be great to use at the art easel because they're all real photographs. And if you already have them or they're already printed or whatever like real photographs you have of fall that are printed, put a couple of those at the easel. Um, and that way it'll inspire le little learners to maybe paint something fallish. Do they have to? No, but they can if they want. Another fun fall art activity I like to do is rolling paintings. So again, okay, these apples are fake, but you can use real ones. This one um, is actually, um, it was really uh, a green apple, but I spray painted it because I couldn't find any that year. So what you're gonna do is put, okay, these wouldn't fit, but get like a cup or something and you can put your apples in the cup. So get ones that are bigger or bowls, bowls would work too. And they're gonna put those in there and I like to use, I have a spoon so they can mix them around and they put a piece of paper in. This was one that a kiddo, or maybe, I think I made this one maybe as an example, um, or showed them how to do it. So you take the spoon and that way they can put the apples in that way if they don't wanna get it all messy. And then all they're gonna do, Oh, and this is just like a paper box, a paper lid. You can also use any lids that like water comes in or any of your food if you go to Sam's or Costco and they're gonna roll it. And as they're rolling it, look, you see what my body's doing? And obviously they're probably gonna be standing up doing this. So they're gonna be using their core. They're gonna be using their upper arms and shoulders so to get those really, really strong. And then they're gonna be using, um, again, their upper arms to so their biceps. And they're also gonna be gripping the box. So they have to move it. They can also shake it. But again, it's all movements they're doing up here, which we have to have strong big muscles in order to have strong little muscles. We grow from the, our core out. So it's a great activity to work on building those, those bigger muscles too. And it makes really fun art. Now, if you don't, let's say you're done with apples. You're like, Jack, I did apples like last week. Like, let's move on. So I got you. No worries. What you can use, again, just put a piece of paper in there. You can use pine cones. So here, I don't have any brown paint. So what you can do is, I, this, again, this is why I love the cups, because again, they have to manipulate it and they have to hold on to the cup. And it's also really great hand-eye coordination, problem solving to get all of that pine cone covered in paint. And they can squoosh it out. Now, another option is if you don't want to use these cups, you don't have to. Put your pine cones in. And then I like to put my paint in these little squeeze, squeeze, they're little like squeezy bottles so they can just squeeze some paint in it. And then it's really fun to do like apples at the beginning of the week. And then once everybody did the apples, they can do the pine cones because, oh, hold on, I need a little bit. I'm just gonna put some paint on this pine cone up make it go a little bit faster so you can see but doesn't this look so fun like even your kids who really are not a big fan of art will want to go here especially your active learners who like to move and groove and do all the things but look look at the design it makes 
this. It's like little speckles because it's like pine cone. So it's all the little poke, all the little um, pieces of the pine cone that are sticking to it. Again, it looks very different than the apple. So it's really, really fun. Now, maybe you don't have pine cones where you live. So you're like, Jackie, I don't have any pine cones. Don't worry, I got you. So what you can do instead is, and actually a lot of my pine cones actually buy at the, um, a lot of mine are like those Christmas ornament pine cones and I just cut the strings off of because then they're clean, they don't have bugs on them and I'm allergic to the outside world. My allergies are always horrible. Um, and again, you can put them in here and they can get them covered, which that's usually what I like to do better is have them covered in the paint. These are actually fake acorns because I don't know if you know this, but they're little little um, little bugs that live in acorns. And if you bring them into your classroom, the little buggies will hatch out of them. So um, if you wanna bring real acorns in your classroom, cook them in the oven. You can look it up on Pinterest or Google it how long you wanna cook them, but otherwise little, um, little critters will hatch. So we don't want that. So my fake ones, they don't move as fast because they're not as heavy, but it's still, really really fun this one is stuck and, and as you can see that one's stuck so we'll have to problem solve and figure out how to move it how to get it unstuck they can shake it and go crazy again look how much fun that is so so much fun and again all the moving it'll get some energy out it's a really fun open-ended art activity acorns pine cones apples use whatever fall thing that you want in here okay there's that, that idea. All the rolling paintings. Okay. Another fun one I love to do in the fall are blowing paintings because the wind is blowing all the leaves. And if your leaves don't fall, it's still probably a little bit windier than it would be if, you know, it wasn't fall. So what you're going to want to do now, I forgot to do this before I came on the video. You can water down the paints if your students don't have strong oral, mo oral motor muscles. Or you can use liquid watercolors and that will obviously, um, that will, those um, the thinner paint will blow a little bit easier. Um, and I, um, if you ever have a kiddo who is drooling um, or who has a lot of saliva, that means their oral motor, their mouth muscles are a little bit weak because they can't, um, they can't, um, you know, swallow it and move it around their mouth and all the things. So blowing activities are great to help kiddos build those oral motor muscles. Um, so you give everybody a straw and they just blow on the paint. Obviously I can do it, but again, if your kids have weak oral motor, just water down the paint a little bit or use liquid watercolor. Obviously they would probably would want them to keep down the table, but I'm just trying to go fast here for you guys. But look how fun it is. And if, when you're done, if you want to, if you have any like fake leaves, they can glue those on or put those in the paint. Um, this one is with liquid watercolor. So either one works. This is just like, oh, in these bottles, it's just that washable Crayola tempera paint or washable discount school supply paint, either one. Um, but yeah, but it's so much fun. And I, another trick too, is to make sure the straw is not super, super long. Make it either this length, kind of like the size of your hand, or you can even do it a little bit shorter because it'll, they'll, it'll be easier for them to blow the air out the other side. So, so fun, but make sure everybody gets their own straw. You know, we don't want everybody getting sick. So you can do blowing paintings because it's fall and the leaves are blowing. Okay. Okay. Another one, so this one is a dropper painting. So I like to use the colored cups because you're either gonna use liquid watercolor for this or water with um, a little bit of food dye in it and you give everybody a paper towel and then you put the water, liquid watercolor or um, again, water with a little bit of food coloring and what they're gonna do is they're gonna drop Drop it on the paper towel. And then it ends up looking like this or like this. Here's another one a kiddo did. 
We tried to write their name in <laughs> permanent marker on the edge. If you want to, you can try and write their names on permanent marker in the corner or like maybe their first initial. Um, but look how pretty these are. I know some teachers too, they do this and then they, um, especially if they have the bigger sheets, they'll cut them out to look like a leaf and then they can hang them from the ceiling and they'll kind of blow when the door opens and things like that. Or you can cut them, you know, in the shape of a pumpkin, but the leaf is really fun because it's kind of leafy colors. Um, but it's great for get, working on um, that fine motor strength with all the droppers. And I use the cups because when the liquid watercolor is in here, you really can't tell what color it is. So if you have droppers that are the same color as the lid, you can use that. Or if you have a dropper that doesn't have a colored lid on it, you can put a little bit of um, tape on uh, around your dropper so that way they can match. So that way they're putting the right colors in the right one. And are they gonna mix it up? Yeah, it happens. But um, but if you color code it, it's a little bit easier because like this is red. Like if you didn't see the top, you would never guess that that's red. So it's hard for the kiddos to see um, what color it is. So it's really fun. But again, just dropper paintings because all the leaves are dropping and um, you can do dropper paintings. Okay, there's that one. I know, I said I have 10 for you guys, right? This one's really fun, and I have a couple different ways you can do it. So, one way is to make it like apples. So, a lot of times if I use, if I put paint on my blocks, I usually put them in that, um, that like theme, so that way I'm not ruining a whole bunch of blocks. Like, I used these last time with paint. And what I did was, um, I love using these little... These are um, little um, clear plates from the Dollar Tree because um, one, they're like, you get 10 for a dollar and two, they clean really nicely. So you just squirt some paint, um, some paint on your, on your plate and then put, put the, um, the dropper in there and then they dip it in paint and put it on, dip it in paint, put it on and they can make it however they want, wherever they want. And then um, they, you can use a little bit of marker when they're done and add stems. This was the one I made. <laughs> Here's one a kiddo made. And then if you don't want to use these, you can, I can't reach them. You can use dot markers. Maybe I can. Can't I? Okay. You can put out dot markers and they can make little apples. You can pretend they're pumpkins. And then they can draw the little stems on them. It's really fun. So whichever you want to do. Now, let's say you're like, again, I already did pumpkins. No worries. Totally fine. Don't use those. Where did they go? Oh, I found them. They're over here. So what you're going to do is put a little, some orange paint down. And then... You're gonna put out some paint sticks or you can use markers. These are just some paint sticks. Move that out of the way for you guys. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna draw the pumpkin vines with their paint stick. I already did it to save time. And then what they're gonna do, I have pom-poms on these little clothespins. So they have to hold it with their, their muscles, their little fine motor muscles. Again, developing that, that grasp. And I have a small, I have a medium, and guess what? I have a large. So, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, this one's not sticking very well, <laughs> of course. And then you have the large pumpkin, so that one they really have to push down. And again, it's open-ended art. They wanna do the vines, they can. If they don't want to, they don't have to. They can just smoosh all these little pumpkins all the way around it. And look how fun that is. And also, when they make the vines, if they want to, obviously, and you can totally use markers if you don't have paint sticks, use what you have. Um, it's also really helping them work on those curvy lines like in S and in B um, and um, in Q, all of those curvy lines. And we're getting their wrists to move a whole bunch of different ways. So it's really, really fun. That is a really, really fun one too. Okay, so we got our pumpkins and our pumpkin patch. We had our apples with 
some blocks. Another thing you can do, and I know you guys probably see these at um, the dollar store or Michael's, wherever, um, all of the foam pumpkins, or maybe they're felt, and the foam leaves. I always grab these like the season before when they're on clearance. Um, hold on, I'm gonna prop. Let me prop this up so you can see a little bit. There we go. So we have our pumpkins. Now there's a couple different things. I, I, I say a couple, a bazillion things you can do with them. You know, you can do letter games with them, number games with them. You can put them on the floor and, you, floor and use them for um, gross motor games, but you can also use them in art. And I'm gonna show you two different things you can do with them. Obviously there's a ton more, but here are just two that I like to do. So um, students love gluing and sticking in all the collage things, right? So this little tray I think is either from Walmart or the dollar store. And I know people are like, I don't have collage materials. I love using cut up pipe cleaners. Um, Here's some sequins, because I get those at the Dollar Tree. Okay, this looks like fire, but I should probably put brown in it or green. Um, these are just some, and you can tell I cut it because none of them are even um, cut up tissue paper. And then I have glitter. I broke <laughs> um, one of my, um, these are just salt shakers. The Dollar Tree used to have them, they don't anymore. Um, but they're salt shakers from the Dollar Tree. And if you think there's too many holes and the glitter's coming out too fast, um, hot glue some of the holes closed so that way they don't come off. But if you have some little shakers like this too, that your glitter comes in, and again, hot glue the ones so they so less comes out at a time. Um, but you can put out some glitter. So fun. I know the families will love you from having them make glitter things. Now, I know you're thinking like, oh my God, like they're going to have to glue like crazy things with the glue and it's gonna be a mess. This is what I used to do all the time in my classroom. Um, we used to have a glue bucket with a paintbrush because when they're in the paintbrush, guess what? They're working on that with that grasp, right? And you can tell it's a food container because at the end of the day, we would just put the lid on it and the next morning just take the lid off, or sorry, so at the end of the day, you put the lid on and we would just soak the paintbrushes um, overnight and yes, eventually they get gross. So use plastic ones once. If you have like old, um, any like paintbrushes that are gonna be gross, use those. If not, um, switch to the like the plastic paintbrushes. And then I just have this old one. Um, but yeah, so you can soak them overnight. And then the next morning when you get to your classroom to open up your classroom, take the paintbrushes that were soaking all night and um, put them back in the glue. And then that little bit of water that's on the brush will kind of wake up the glue. And then now you have glue, you have real glue without having to deal with like um, like the big bottle and then just squirting it all out. But I like this because, and I know some people use glue sponges, but I like using the paintbrush so that way they can literally work on their grass and they just have to brush it off. And again, as the week goes on, it gets more and more sticky, but they can paint it on and then they can literally just Kind of glue whatever they want onto their leaf. And again, put out what you have. If you have a lot of pipe cleaners, maybe you do have some fall collage things. Put that out. If you don't, use what you got. Put out some pipe cleaners. Put out some tissue paper. They can crumble it up. Um, and the kids who don't like getting glue on themselves, they will, they will probably like kind of drop things from up here so that way they don't have to touch it and that's okay. Um, but yeah, they can just get to cover it in glue. They can put again, glitter on it. If you don't, if you're not a glitter person, don't put the glitter out. If don't, ca don't cause yourself stress. If don't put it out just cause I said so. Like put it out because you know, it's not going to drive you or your team crazy. I do love glitter though. Um, but yeah, but they just like squish everything on. And then when they're done, they have this beautiful, gorgeous collage leaf, right? So pretty. Um, you can hang, again, hang these from the ceiling. You can hang them on the wall, take them home, put them in their portfolio. Cause again, this is super great. Oh, I just got glue in my hair. <laughs> this is great. This is really, really great. Um, fine motor when they're using the glue brushes and all the little things. So yeah. Okay. I have glue everywhere now. <laughs> you can also, if you wanted to, too, you could even put some paint out. And that way they could if they wanted to. Um, where's orange? 
They could, with these little bottles, they could drop some paint on there if they wanted to. Again, you do you. You do what makes your heart happy. If that's too much, then don't do that part. So, we have our little collage leaf. Now, if you don't want to do collage, totally fine. But I, I used to have these out literally, I think all like 10, 12 years that I taught in um, a full day classroom in my public school. Had them out all the time, like all the time. They're great. Okay, so we got our gorgeous collage. Oh, here it is. Okay, I need another tray. Hold on. So, and if you don't have these, I forgot. If you don't have these, just cut some small, like red, green, um, fall colored, like cardstock. You can cut them into a leaf, you can cut them into a pumpkin. You could also just cut it like a smaller square for them to collage and then make it. And they don't have to have these foam things if you don't have them. Um, another fun thing to do with these squares is to make it like a puzzle. I think I've shown you this um, pumpkin before, but I just have a whole bunch of these foam sticker shapes. They're from like Discount School Supply. But when they put these on there, it's kind of like doing a puzzle. And again, you could totally do a leaf too. If the bright colors bother you, put out just the fall colored um, stickers or whatever they are, like shapes. Um, and basically what they have to do is they peel one off. So let me peel one off. That one you can't see. Oh, and then this, this is my bucket for scraps. So I usually have that out too. So that way if they have trash, hopefully you can go in there and not the bucket. So they would have to find a spot where it would fit. So it's great for spatial reasoning. Um, kind of like, you know, their own DIY puzzle like this one. It's too big. It's not going to fit anywhere. It could fit there, but guess what? It would be hanging off. Um, so yeah, so it's really, really fun. Again, use whatever foamies you have. You can cut your own pumpkins too, or leaves, or acorns, whatever you want. But it's like a little, um, a little DIY puzzle. So, again, this is just my trash bucket. But if I, um, if I had this out for art as an activity, I, some, a lot of times I have a sample out. A lot of times I don't. Just depends. I would literally, this would be um, my art center choice for the week. I have the pumpkins out, and I have these. And then they, in the little trash bucket, and then they can go to town and make something if they want. Or you can do it for a small group and everybody has to make one. Up to you. Okay, so we got our fall shape puzzles. All right, another one is cookie cutter art. And I know we think we, a lot of us do cookie cutter art when? We do it in, in the winter when, um, when it's cookie time or the holidays. So don't just do it during the holidays. You can do it any, anytime you want. I have some fall leaves, so you could use those. Or you could also do a whole bunch of pumpkins. These are all different sizes that are really fun. And here's a hint, the pumpkin kind of looks like the apple. So it, these could be, especially if you have these in the set that are silver, they could be apples or pumpkins, um, but basically, you're just gonna put the cookie cutter. Again, I love these plates. And then they can stamp it on. You have to get more paint and it's all dry. And they can just stamp it on. Oh, yellow. Let's get some yellow paint out. And then again, we just smooth it around and they just stamp. Can you tell what it is? Kind of, <laughs> but what are we doing this for? We are doing this so they can be creative, so they can explore, so they can work on their fine motor muscles, so they can work on cause, um, explore cause and effect, problem solving, all the things. Like I'm holding my paper because it's moving. Um, I'm, I'm out of paint, so now I need to get more paint. We are just exploring and having fun in art and working on all those social skills and a lot of problem solving um, skills as well. So, so, so pretty. And you can even do like this giant one. And if you're wondering where I get my, whoop, I broke this part, where I get my cookie cutter leaves from, this is like a maple leaf. Um, a lot of them I get from uh, Hobby Lobby has a ton usually, or um, Michael's, and then Walmart has some too, usually in like the seasonal section. 
Um, so yeah, but super fun cookie cutter art, super, super fun. And if you're really daring, they can always put out some glitter at the end of their cookie cutter art, and then now they have sparkly fall leaves. I, I mean, I, I will, if there is a reason to use glitter, I'm all for it. I love glitter. So we're gonna, I have three more for you. So I know in the spring we always think about painting, right? If we're doing, we paint with flowers. Well, there's a whole bunch of fun fall um, flowers. So we have like a sunflower and we have like the, um, like I have a mum and then, now this is like a maroon colored paint. So I'd probably try and make like this maroon color before, but so that way it's kind of like matched. But now, let me move this up. prop this up for you guys. So now we can do some fall flower art printing. Again, I know everybody usually does like the apples and stuff, but if they're bored with that, do something else. These look like fireworks, so fun. And then they can, I love, um, I literally just pull the stem out and then it's kind of like a little, um, a little handle. If they need a bigger one, um, like a little bigger, like handle on it, um, leave the stem in there and, um, hot glue the stem in. And then that way they, um, they have something easier to grab onto. But look how pretty that is. And look. The whole time, what am I doing? I'm grasping the flower, I'm pushing, using all of my arm strength. Um, I'm manipulating the flower with my wrist. Again, great fine motor, great open-ended art, and so pretty and so fun. And again, add glitter <laughs> if you want. Always fun to add glitter. Oh, I think I got paint on my head. <laughs> so, flower printing. With all the mums and all the beautiful flowers, or if you wanted to too, you could put out a pumpkin and an apple and a mum and um, a pine cone and they could print with all the different things. So this is under my tray, <laughs> ignore that. So I know a lot of us do the torn paper apple, right? A lot of us do this one. Well, guess what? Apple is kind of the same shape as, oh geez, I fell in there, as a pumpkin. And, I know you guys have probably heard this, heard me say this before. Use, if, if tearing paper is hard for your students, use the small ones. And then again, I always usually have the paper already torn. I lost my glue sticks. I don't know where I put them. Okay, we're gonna pretend. <laughs> so you're gonna tear the paper, which is again, you guys know, it's great to find motor. So they would tear the paper and then they have their stem and that would make their pumpkin. Again, you can do apples or you can make little mini pumpkins. But my big trick is to have some of this torn paper ready to go because tearing paper is hard. Why is it hard? Because their body has to go two different ways. So one hand goes this way, one hand goes that way. They have to grasp with these pincer muscles and they have to pull, it's hard. It's a really tricky scope. Once they get it, they're usually good, but it's tricky. So put out some paper scraps for them um, and then they can tear and again, or you could do cutting. You could have them cut with scissors too and make a cutting pumpkin with the little plate. You could also do an acorn where um, you have two different shades of, um, you have the two different shades for the acorn. And then you can just cut it in half. And then you can make this one more of a point. <laughs> oh, my stuff is falling on me. And then they have their little acorn. So fun. So you don't have to just do apples, especially if your class likes this. Because different years, they like different things. Um, you can also do pumpkins and acorns and make a gorgeous bullet board. Okay, you ready for my last idea? Ta-da! Oh my gosh, I can't grab it. This is a salad spinner. So, salad, oh, 
Salad spinners are really fun. You put paper in the bottom, they spin it, and then, and then what? And then it makes gorgeous art. So um, you probably want to like grab a cutout of a leaf. I forgot to do that before the video. So I made this really pretty leaf. Now you can do a leaf, you can do a pumpkin, but the leaves are my favorite. So you put it down in the bottom and I would have these pre-cut out or if you're in kinder, you can put out stencils of leaves and they can trace and cut out their favorite one. But this is hard to cut. So I would have these pre-cut out if you're preschool. You have preschool babies and I would put these out. Use the fall colors. If you want to use brown, put out brown. If you don't want to put out brown, don't. All they're going to do is they're going to squeeze a little bit on the leaf. And my paper spinner, in case you're wondering, is from Ikea. I think it was like $4. I like this one because it's clear. And they're going to put some paint on it. And then they have to put the lid on. Put it on tight and they have to hold it. And sometimes, especially if you have three-year-olds, um, they're going to have to work together. Or, oh, sorry, I shook you. Um, they shook the camera. Um, you're going to have to hold it for them. Or you can teach them to help them each other hold it. Also, make sure the bottom of your paper spinner has like a, like a rubber little thing on it. If not, hot glue. Um, you know those like rubber... Um, those rubber shelving, you can put some of that on the bottom here and that way it won't move on them as much. And then they hold on to it and they have to spin it. The more they spin it, the more splattered it'll be. And they open it up. And then it's got paint on it. Now, if they're like, I want more paint on it, they can put it inside, put more paint on the parts that don't have paint. Um, if you do a circle, typically it stays, like the paint will go everywhere, but when you do a cutout like this in there, in the salad spinner, um, it tends to move a little bit. But once there's a little bit of paint on the bottom, they kind of stick. So again, hold on to it. Spin it. Look at all of this great upper body and um, strength building activity you're doing because they're having to hold on to it. Both sides of the body have to work together. All the things and look at this leaf and that's so pretty so fun your kids will love this if you're doing apples you can put an apple in there if you're doing pumpkins put a pumpkin in there you can do acorn but leaf shapes are my favorite to put in here and again you can make them <laughs> what I do usually to get my my shape I um you can go into like canva or you can google image um search just like a leaf print it, and then cut out the outline so that way you have something to go off of <laughs> rather than freehanding it. But if you're creative and you can make a beautiful freehanded leaf, then you can do that too. All right. Okay. So yeah, so the salad spinner, I got at Ikea. I know Walmart usually has one pretty cheap too. The little bottles are from Discount School Supply. I love these and I use them for everything. Now, usually at the end of the day, um, I will make sure to go around and close all of them because if you leave them out, the little, it'll get a little hard part on the top and you just gotta kind of get it um, poked off, but then it's fine. But these, I, oh, I got paint all over me, <laughs> shocking. Um, these work great. And again, add glitter it, or not, you, you do you. So it's really, really fun. So I hope you guys loved all of these fall, fun fall art activities. Um, we will get this photographed um, this week and then we will get the blog post up as soon as possible. And yeah, so that way you guys, if you like next year, if you wanna go back, these ideas will be on the blog in hopefully a week or so. So I hope you guys loved all these fun fall activity or fun fall art activities. Um, again, if you do any of these in your classroom and share it on Instagram or TikTok or wherever or in the Facebook group, um, make sure to tag me because I love to see what you guys do. Or if there's something I forgot that you think is amazing and you want to share, make sure you hop over to the Pocket or Preschool Facebook group and share it in there um, because your ideas spark everyone's ideas. So make sure you guys are sharing your ideas in there too. And I love sharing your ideas on, um, on the videos too. So 
You guys have an amazing night and the links are at the top or at the bottom, wherever the links are. There's links to all the fall blog things on the blog. There's links to all of my fall principles on TPT um, at the top. There's also links to where I will be at for professional development. And my Amazon wish list is on there too. Or not wish list, Amazon storefronts on there too. So, all right. You guys have a great night and I will talk to you soon.